Welcome back out here, everybody. Thanks for coming to the channel. Today, we have a pretty exciting show. Information on COVID-19 is rapidly changing and evolving. And we're going to look at the research on blood types and the coronavirus. We're going to look at this research before actual publication. That's what's happening today because the information is moving so fast and furious. To get to that exponential hive mind, we have to get the information out quickly. Blood in Chinese medicine is pretty critical. Just like Western medicine, blood transports nutrition throughout the body. And in Chinese medicine, weakness in the blood will leave you more susceptible to illnesses. What's different in Chinese medicine is one disease can have different treatments based on the differences in the patient. We're starting to see a similar concept in Western medicine with genetics. Your blood type is inherited from your parents and is part of your genetic makeup. The concept that you're more susceptible to certain diseases due to blood type is not a new thing. More and more research is being done in this area. Type O, more susceptible to peptic ulcers. Type A has a higher rate of gastric cancer. This information stems from blood type research. In fact, research on blood types and susceptibility to influenza has been going on since at least 1962. Blood types were actually identified by Carl Landsteiner in 1901. And in 1930, he received the Nobel Prize for his efforts. So let's get into it. I always like looking at the good news first. We'll look at the blood type that appears to have the most robust resistance to the coronavirus. Yay! So all of you with that blood type will be able to breathe a sigh of relief immediately. Then let's look at what in the blood scientists think is helping to improve the immune system. And then we're going to wrap it up with a blood type, which appears to be the most susceptible to the coronavirus. And some final thoughts on what you can do to support yourself. Hey, but why is anyone looking at blood types on SARS-CoV-2 infection anyways? Because they did it before and believe they found a strong correlation. In a 2008 published research report, they found that blood type O had the least chance of infection with that 2003 and 2004 SARS outbreak. And that's the same information that they are encountering today. Blood type O appears to have the most resistance to SARS-CoV-2. Isn't that amazing? They actually looked at blood types before and found some great information that gave them a platform to continue researching. Well, here's some more good news. The most common global blood type is type O. It's estimated about 39% of the world population has type O. I always thought it was more people with blood type O, and I'm kind of surprised at the distribution of blood types across the globe. We have four key blood groups. A. B, A, B, and O. The significant distinguishing factor on the cell of the different blood types is the antigen. Blood type A has the A antigen on its surface. B has the B antigen. Blood type AB has both of them, whereas blood type O has no antigens. And when the blood type antigen comes into contact with blood cells that don't have the same antigen, the antigen immediately calls on the immune system to notify it of a foreign invader. The immune system creates the antibody to eliminate the unfamiliar blood cell. So if your blood type is A and you have an A antigen, when a B blood cell enters the body, the body is signaled to make anti-B antibodies. So the anti-B antibody attacks the B red blood cell. What the research suggests is the antigens may help ward off the virus. The research paper we're looking at today is currently in the process of being peer reviewed, so it's not yet published. And in this process of being peer reviewed, what happens is they put the paper out there and 
everybody can go out there and read the research paper. You don't even have to be a doctor to read this. And you can come up with as many things as you can think of as to why this research may not be valid. And, you know, why I'm talking about it is because there's already a significant amount of research proving your inherited blood type impact your susceptibility to certain diseases. And this research was previously conducted on SARS-CoV. In 2003 and 2004, the virus was showing similar results. Let's review some of the information in that research paper. Now, this paper is currently can be found on medrix.org and the paper's titled Relationship Between the ABO Blood Group and COVID-19 Susceptibility. I'm going to put a link in the video description below so you can actually go out there and grab this research. Okay, the data surprised me and I found their hypothesis compelling. The data appears to be significant and this was statistically significant in more than just one way. And the report is pretty clear. This is an observational research paper and they are very clear in saying we would be premature to use this study to guide clinical practice. Okay, but you know, we will. And I'll show you what I mean a little bit later. The study group first grabbed 3,700 people from Wuhan to get their distribution of blood type. And so here's the figures that they had, uh, 32% A, about 25% B, about 9% for AB, and about 34% O. And I want to compare that to some other data on the web. And I'm sure Wikipedia is not the best, but you know, it's something. And so let's see what they say on Wikipedia for blood type dis distribution. And they show O is about 48%, A is about 28%, B is about 19%, and AB is about 5%. Now, I had done some other reading and in my research, I had also saw that they were suggesting that the type O was a little bit higher than the relationship that they got from those 3,700 people. Now, what they did is they compared this to 17, about 1,800 patients with COVID-19 from one of the Wuhan hospitals. And they saw a distribution where A was 38% of the total and B was 26%, AB was 10%. And here we have O is 26%. So even if we just looked at this comparison to what they said the population was in Wuhan, we can see that O statistically significantly less than the 34% that they saw in the normal population. If we compare it to what Wikipedia says, where they're thinking it's 48%, it's almost half of of what they say the population is. And then if we compare the A group, which only has the A antigen on the surface, then we can see that 38% were uh, infected with COVID-19 compared to their population of 32%. And then you compare that to the Wikipedia population of 28%. And again, seriously, stati statistically significantly higher than what they're saying is in the average population. And just the distribution, um, they, they also did a distribution of patients who had passed. And in that, the percentage of those with type A who had passed was even higher. So really an interesting report. If you have some time, I would go out, check that link below and go out and pull it down and, and take a look at it because they also saw this happening in the 2003-2004 SARS-CoV uh, virus. There's definitely something with blood types. 
and it may be something that we want to research just a little bit further. Okay, do you remember the book Eat Right for Your Blood Type? The book was initially published in 1996 by Dr. Dadamo, and it's been updated since then. And his daughter appears to have continued in her father's shoes and continues to work on blood type research and foods. What was groundbreaking for me in this book is the concept that antigens on the blood cell could be sensitive to different foods we eat, causing inflammation, weight gain, and impact our emotional health. So in general, these foods could impact our overall health. And I bring up the book here because the research in the book indicated that blood type A appeared to produce less stomach acid than the other blood types. And the author also postulated that low stomach acid may be part of the reason why grains and vegetables did better with this group. They didn't have enough stomach acid to break down the heavy meats. The book suggested that the low stomach acid could be part of the reason blood type A was more susceptible to gastric cancers. Okay, we also know that SARS-CoV and SARS-CoV-2 can both impact the digestive system with nausea, explosive diarrhea, and other symptoms of a stomach flu. And I bring this up because today we know that gut health is a critical part of our overall immune system health. And I'm wondering if this is part of the reason blood type A may be more susceptible to the coronavirus. So two things come to mind when I'm reading through this research report. And these would come to mind, especially if I was type A. And this is what I meant when I said, I would use this, use this information to guide my own self-care practice. And I'd also share it with other people. You know, it, it's like wearing a facial mask that I reviewed in episode two of this series. In episode two, the US was stating, do not wear a facial mask. And I went for wearing the mask based on information from other countries. A Couple weeks later, we were told it would be in our best interest to wear a mask. This information's similar to me. I'm just taking the more conservative approach when it comes to protecting my health and my family's health. So based off of this information, I would look at what I could do to improve my digestive health. And secondly, I would look at what I can do to support and strengthen my immune system. Now, I've got quite a few videos out there on digestive health, and I'll put links in the video description so you can easily find them. And you can also see in this video, they pop up uh, as we're going through, and you can click on them at any time and go see those. But in my next video, I'll look at the immune system and share with you some strategies from Chinese medicine that you can do at home and you can do to help improve and strengthen your, what they would call your defensive chi and what Western medicine would call your immune system. Thanks for coming out. Until next time, I'll catch you on the other side.